Today we give thanks for the gift of the child Jesus. A child is born for us, a son given to us. Christmas is a very special day at St. Mary of the Angels. We welcome all of our regular parishioners and our visitors. Your trust and safety are important to us. Please leave the paper X in your pew to help us know where to clean and sanitize. The lyrics and readings of today's Mass can be found at sma-church.org slash lyrics. Please sing along quietly for safety. If you have not made your Christmas confession and wish to receive Holy Communion, please take advantage of confessions during the Mass. We will accommodate as many as possible. Today's Mass is offered for blessings for the Velasco and Jaime families.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of your true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his glory, gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and for, forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, in training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness 
and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to, Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was the house of the, of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy. There will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. We read in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. And this is what we're living, my brothers and sisters. Every Christmas, a great light has come into the world. Christ is born. This is a light we know that Isaiah is talking about. The world is different now. After Christ has come, it's a different world. It's a different place. 
There's a great joy. We see the Christmas lights in the neighborhoods, some have crushes, we have here the crib. And St. Augustine tells us, you would have suffered the eternal death had he not been born in time. You would have suffered everlasting unhappiness had he had it not been for his mercy. By his birth, he continues, Christ has made us sons and daughters of God. Augustine will say, this is a sheer grace. We cannot merit this. It's a gift of God. We could have been born before Christ. He could have decided, well, I won't work for the salvation of the world for many, many years. There's a beautiful dialogue between St. Bernard. He's praying to Blessed Virgin Mary, and he begs Mary to say yes. Don't, he says, don't hesitate for a long while. Say yes, Mary, because the whole of creation hinges on your answer. So Mary says yes. Then salvation begins. Christ's birth again has changed the world. It brings to a mind a whole different world of the seven sacraments, the Catholic Church, so many differences. And it brings a great peace, although it's never perfect because original sin is a reality. But what we do see, if we just imagine for a moment, what would the world be without the church? No hospitals, no schools, no parishes. Be a very difficult place to live. We're in a time in history which is not easy. But if it wouldn't have been for the church, so many wonderful works of charity, so many people trying to live charity, neighbor to neighbor, because that's what the church teaches. That was what Christ teaches. So with faith, we know why we are on earth. We're here, we're God's creatures. That simple catechism question, to know God, to love God, and to serve God, which is valuable if we're seven years old, or 70, or 80, or 90, whatever. That's what we're here on earth for, to know God, to love God, and to serve God. And the coming of Christ clarifies all of that for us. We know we're God's creatures. Whatever time God leaves us on earth. But we know there's an eternity after because Christ has come. We read the Gospels. Everlasting life comes up many, many times in the Gospels. St. Paul, etc. In the New Testament. Even the Old Testament. But the idea being that Christ has come He's watching over each one of us. This is the thing. We're not just here on earth. Christ is watching God the Father over each one of us. He sends his son Christ to save us. And each one, not just the world in general, he's doing that. So that gives us peace. Because we see in many times, and down through history, the world has been in turmoil. And we're in one right now. But we have to have trust in God. God the Father doesn't just give us the world and say, well, yeah, go on your own. At the end of your life, we'll judge you. He doesn't do that. He's with each one of us. That gives us a great faith and a great peace. That's our Catholic faith. We know that he's watching over each one of us. He doesn't bring us into the world and forget us. St. Jose Maria in, in a Christmas homily speaks about how God watches over us and we look at Christ. It says the fact that Jesus grew up and lived just like us shows us that human existence and all the ordinary activities of men and women have a divine meaning. So just the ordinary things, you know, you go to school each day if you're a student, you go to the office, you go to the factory or whatever, you're a homemaker, you're there working away. No matter how much we may have reflected on all this, whenever we think about it, we should always marvel at the 30 years of obscurity 
which made up the greater part of Jesus' life among men. He lived in obscurity, but for us, that period is full of light. It illuminates our days and fills them with meaning, for we are ordinary Christians who lead an ordinary life, just like millions of other people all over the world. So this is what this coming of Christ, we see his life, it just teaches. His life just coming into the world like any other baby. And he grows like any other baby and to be a man. Works for those 30 years. Last three years are spectacular. Goes around working miracles and things. Crucified on the cross eventually so that we could get into heaven. But those first 30 years weren't that. He was a carpenter. He worked as a carpenter. And so this is what one of the things that can teach us so many things that the life of Christ can teach us. The birth of Christ teaches us that. So these days then, pray in front of the crib. If you have one at home or come here, the church is open, side doors from six to six. Pray in front of the crib. Look at Mary, look at Joseph. Look at the infant Jesus who needs our protection, amazingly enough. He needed Joseph and Mary to watch over him just like any other baby. And Christ is light. Christ came into the world that way. And we can make it a comparison or whatever you want to say, that he needs us too now at this moment, any moment in history, to take the Christ child, say loving things to him, know that he needs to be defended. His church needs to be defended. It doesn't just, you know, oh, it's a Catholic church, God's going to take care of it. We see that's not true. He's counting on us to take care of that. On the Pope, the bishops, vast majority of the church is lay people. Who's going to remedy society? The lay people. The bishops say stop abortion. Fine. Nobody pays attention. Very few. Who's going to stop abortion? Lay people who are doctors and nurses. So I don't do abortion. I don't do that. Hospital administrators. My hospital doesn't do that. That's what's going to change the world. Not because, you know, some religious figure gets up and that religious figure has to get up and say it, but the work, let's say, in the trenches of the lay people. So this is what Monsignor Scribe is teaching us, St. Josemaria, the universal call to sanctity. Christ reminds us of that with his life. Those first 30 years, just ordinary work, just ordinary things. And each one of us is called to that. Maybe someone's called to do spectacular things. Well, that's fine, do them. But even the spectacular person, ordinary life is ordinary life. You get up in the morning, you eat, you put your clothes on, you go to work, whatever it is. But the thing is that let's learn from Christ. See our Lord, how he is. And have faith, have faith. Don't feel alone. We're alone. No, not alone. God is with us. He's always with us. Pope Benedict says when he was cardinal, Christ writes straight with crooked lines. Well, he's writing with crooked lines right now. But it's going to straighten out. It's going to be all right. So this is the thing. Trust in our Lord. And remember, Christmas is not over tomorrow, or whenever it is. I guess, yeah, I guess we are. Doing. It's not over tomorrow. Christmas goes on, I think, until January 10th this year, if I remember. You can look it up whenever the baptism of our Lord is. So Christmas, then we have Epiphany, we have uh, January 1st, Mary, Mother of God, the baptism of our Lord, Holy Family, all these beautiful feasts, almost for two weeks. It's Christmas time. So this is the thing. Let's reflect on that. Don't let us say, okay, uh, back to work, That's all, off we go again. We'll go back to work probably, but we gotta be thinking, well, what's going on? salvation, history, what's going on? Holy family, etc. And let's ask Mary, this is the year of Saint Joseph, so let's ask Mary to watch over us, what she will do, bring us the infant Jesus, and bring Saint Joseph more and more into things. The Holy Father has proclaimed, well, this is the year of Saint Joseph. So however you want to live that, again, reflect on his life. He's an ordinary carpenter. Get some prayers you want to say to Saint Joseph, whatever. But let's really try to bring 
St. Joseph more and more into our daily life. He'll help us a lot and help the church. Now today, because it's Christmas, instead of bowing our head on the creed, we'll genuflect. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through the intercession of St. Joseph, protector and provider of God's family on earth, we, the people of St. Mary the Angels, pray for his leadership and guidance in our lives and in the life of our parish. That the words and example of our Pope, Cardinal Archbishop, and of all priests and deacons enlighten the path to Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Instill in each one of us the same faith, hope, and profound love for Jesus and Mary that characterized St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us bring Jesus Christ into the lives of our families, friends, neighbors, and all of Chicago, and renew our parish as a bright and cheerful home, so as to fill our city and our age with the light of faith and the radiance of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God grant us the gift of earthly peace and well-being and lead us to life with him in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our civic leaders pursue the common good and peace that Jesus came to bring on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God protect all peace officers and first responders who risk their lives to protect us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each member of our faith community find Jesus in their lives and remain steadfast and responsible followers of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people here and throughout the world always seek to do good as God's beloved children we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord Jesus call us today as he did holy men and women of old, saying, Renew my church. May the Holy Spirit enable us to hear him clearly, to listen to each other attentively, to imagine our future boldly, to discern his direction wisely, 
to persevere in his holy will courageously, to stay together in charity, to surrender our own plans readily, to embrace the greater good, to hand on his gifts to future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the holy company of our blessed Mother Mary, the apostles and all the saints, may their example and presence inspire us with patient confidence in the work of your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. For your safety, there will be no collection. Please do support St. Mary of the Angels, either electronically, the sheet with the X has the link to do so, or by using the drop box safe in the cross aisle at the center of the church or candle boxes on the walls. Yeah. Sure. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord. We pray that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory is shown upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Sanctus Deus, Deus To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these holy and uh, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to God unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Blaise our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all those holding to the truth that hand on the Catholic and the apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sextus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Florence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your retracting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. celebrating the most sacred night on which a blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count it among those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, an eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension in heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of life eternal, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as one you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, and through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy in body and blood of your Son. May be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As a, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace is grant of peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
the word became flesh and we have seen his glory. For communion, please sanitize your own hands and line up single file in the center and outside aisles using the markings on the floor to keep proper distancing. After communion is placed in your hand, step to the side where there is a star. With your free hand, remove one side of your mask, consume the host, then replace your mask and return to your pew by an intermediate aisle. To receive communion on the tongue, please go to any station after everyone else has received. Oh, God. 
as you got some right behind you. Okay, thanks, Kathleen. What's that? Oh, no, hold your shell right out there. Let's go away. Yeah, thanks, Joe.
Your hand on top here. It's, it's a big one. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. We thank the Gogolinsky Trofimuk Funeral Home for their gift of 2020, 2021 calendars. Please pick one up at the back of the church while supplies last. Please consider an extraordinary end of the year donation Thank you for your ongoing and generous support for our church. Please join us on January 29th at 7 p.m. when we will present Mr. Daniel Martinez and Ann Grosskloss, along with Mr. and Mrs. Lewis Jaime, in a panel discussion supporting single parents, moderated by Dr. Jamie Vasquez. This event is not only addressed to single parents, but to all so that we can support each other as a family of faith. Look for more information in our bulletin and on the parish website. The Memorari campaign has helped the parish immensely. Through Our Lady's intercession, we have continued strong during the pandemic as collections have increased and our school children have been in school and parishioners have worshiped in church safely. Thank you, O Blessed Mother, and help us further our mission as we prepare to enter Renew My Church. Let's say the Memorari together to pray for our parish. Remember, O Most, o most gracious, gracious Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary, that never, never was it known that anyone who fled to your thy protection, implored thy help, help or, or sought, sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, 
O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Now we have, excuse me, May you and your family have a very blessed Christmas and New Year. The priests, deacons, and staff of the parish are committed to keeping each one of you in our prayers. And after the final blessing, please exit the church through the main door, maintaining distancing. Please do not linger in the church so that we can clean and sanitize. The Lord be with you. Now we have a special blessing for families. O oh God, who have created us in love and saved us in mercy, and through the bond of marriage, you have established the family and will that it should become a sign of Christ's love for his church. Shower your blessing on the families gathered here in your name. Enable those who are joined by one love to support one another by their fervor of spirit and devotion to prayer. Make them responsive to the needs of others and witnesses to the faith in all they say and do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. and smelled like smoke. <laughs> Ooh. 